long as we're talking about uh, the fringe element, let's talk a little about the, the Tim McVeigh case, because something is going on there, which I think is very troublesome. Some of the survivors and the relatives of survivors are suing the federal government, saying that the federal government should have done more to prevent this. Really, basically, about the, the a much bigger notion that's abroad in this land, which is that everything has to have a remedy. That is, if, if you suffer, it can't be an act of, right. an act, what we used to call an act of God, an act of fate. Somebody is responsible because somebody could have prevented it. Um, and Well, it, it, it is. And you, you feel for these folks because they've, they've had a horrific loss. I mean, it's a lot more defensible, I guess, than the kind of people, literally a guy who threw himself in front of a subway train and then sued and collected because yeah. the train didn't stop in the, in the 2.8 right. seconds that he went off the platform. We were a society of victims. I mean, everybody used to yeah. be, you know, you took responsibility for your actions. Say nobody does. Everybody's looking for the quick buck. I mean, they'll sue you for any reason. It's ridiculous. When I, I mean, I'm only 35. When I was a kid, this notion was ridiculous. You know, it's just the last really quarter century, and everyone's looking for the quick buck, you know? Isn't, and it's isn't a, the idea that the government should be responsible to prevent, in a godlike, absolute way, any tragedy as dumb as the McVeigh idea that the government is a godlike unless they got a conspiracy? Unless they got a specific tip-off that uh, the bomb was going to take place. Now, federal buildings get bomb threats all the time, so the, they can't very well go, you know, if the public would go crazy with hysteria uh, if every time a bomb threat came in, they they went and but shut you know, the really, building down. Do you really believe they did? Do you think the government could have prevented this? I don't think they could have prevented it. They're not going to admit it if they did. Uh, <laughs> well, there there is a conspiracy theory going around that about everything. Yeah. No, but that they, that they actually, actually set it. up the thing. Yeah, but Tommy. Mm -hmm. But come on. Bill's, Bill's I hate to say this, but Bill's right. I mean, uh, no, you're there is a conspiracy right. theory about just about everything. I mean, you know what's going to happen with the San Diego uh, suicide of the next week. Somebody's going to come out telling you that it was murder. Uh, and God help us if Oliver Stone makes the movie. Yeah, they did find 30, they found 39 bloody gloves. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but now he's We've had cases where a guy has broken into a store, broken in a burglar, yeah. and then sued the owner because the owner had a protective device that wound up injuring the burglar. Yes, that's true. So, I mean, I suppose, you know, I'm... Breaking and entering is actually entering. working within the system. Yeah, and and the guys and the guys collected for some reason uh, because yes. uh, because guy, you know. maybe all the people that I went to law school with uh, took your advice that you gave earlier <laughs> and smoking that stuff. One of the things it does is produce some very strange legal theories. But the irony is that these people who are suing the government are really helping McVeigh's case. They're trying to say now the defense that it was the Saddam Hussein. Oh. Well, and Saddam Hussein was really be behind this. You know, I guess it's a lot easier to believe. You know, that picture of him in the rider truck always puzzled me. <laughs> <laughs> and now Maybe he's John, sense. he's John Doe number two. He's maybe dark. He's got the mustache. It all ties That's together right. now. Tim McBride. You oh. think maybe the lawyers could be making some money on this? No. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't have any, McVeigh doesn't have any money. No, I'm talking about the survivors, lawyers. Oh, that are, I mean, yes. Or they, they were going contingency. Well, somebody gets a hangnail as a lawyer. I mean, you know. Obviously, it's someone else's fault. Okay, I have to take a break. We'll come right back. Julianne Malvo and I declare to be named later. Uh, now we're talking about conspiracy theories. I saw on the news yesterday the son of Dr. Martin Luther King said that he didn't think James Earl Ray did this, which we've all thought for 37 years. He, he says, I guess, it's a conspiracy. Now, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he was at USC then, wasn't he? Well, there's always talk of conspiracy when all the facts aren't known. And I think there are a lot of facts that are not known. And I think what surprised me the most was that Dexter King said, I believe you. My family believes you. I was surprised at that I was too. so surprised. So they are privy to information that the, the public at large does not necessarily I, know. I think it's more well, maybe an intuition. I mean, this guy supposedly killed this man's father. 
and he sits down with me. He's going to have sort of a gut reaction that maybe someone objectively wouldn't have. I mean, you're right. The physical evidence, as far as I know, this case was very shaky. I mean, basically his confession. I think in some ways he was the Richard Jewell of his of his age, you know? Well, except Same girl Ray. Well, I'm not saying he did not do it. I mean, but I think the fact that, I mean, cities were burning all around the country as a result of this assassination. Yeah. They had to get some...